Hi everybody, uh, just going to do a commentary for the uh, 2015, or is it 2014, I think it might be 2014, uh, 2014 Adam Sandler film, uh, The Cobbler, which is, uh, I've got to admit, a title of an Adam Sandler film I was not expecting to ever say. Uh, if you need to sync up, we're just on the uh, Voltage Entertainment logo uh, right now. That's always an interesting sort of thing as well, though, that um, when you sort of see um, company logos that you're not sort of expecting. But uh, talking about things like that, uh, oh, in this intro as well, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't mind, but I know um, subtitles like uh, Kryptonite to, to some people, uh, but um, a subtitled intro. But what sort of caught me attention about this movie was, I'm an Adam Sandler fan anyway, and I've been for quite a few years now, but the thing that really sort of... Um, and this, anybody who's listened to any of my previous commentaries or just anybody who knows me is, um, I'm a sucker for a, a film that's got like a, um, a bit of a reputation for being a flop or, or, or one that's just considered like a little bit rubbish or something. And I saw a trailer for this a few months ago, uh, or about a month ago. It was on movietrailers.com, and they've got like a YouTube channel, and I'm on YouTube all the time, and I think the channel popped up on there, and I watched it, and I thought, oh, you know, it looks, you know, perfectly fine, and, you know, didn't really think much of it, and I thought, oh, watch that when it comes out, kind of thing, or, you know, I'll try to track it down, and then I completely forgot about it, and then I went on Reddit, and uh, I tried to limit my Reddit use if I can, because it's so addictive, and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, uh, on that, you know, I feel like that sort of, uh, all the all the news content from all the other sites where Reddit gets the news from that like I feel like I'm a, I'm abandoning them websites so I try to sort of go to the other websites if I can. But well, I was on Reddit anyway and uh, I noticed somebody started a thread saying uh, the new Adam Sandler films flocked really badly and I was like oh, you know and, and this has become like a little bit of a modern trend where they'll say uh, a film's flocked really really badly and you'll look where it is in the charts and it's at like number two or number three in the charts and you're like well i don't think it really has flopped that bad but i was looking for this uh, um looking at this and apparently on its opening weekend it made like twenty four thousand dollars or something and that seems ridiculously low for an adam sandler movie so i was really curious just to see you know just check it out and it's a really good movie and then what's really interesting normally when a film comes out that's like say got this reputation for being you know just not to have done very well normally you go on imdb or or like say reddit all these kind of things and all you'll ever see is like worst film i ever can't believe how rubbish it is it's really terrible and and, and then but the complete reverse i went on like imdb and without barely even looking, uh, you know, like, you know, just it was all there in front of me. There was at least three or four threads just literally there saying, don't know why people are moaning, it's good, it's, you know, really enjoyable. And, like I say, separate threads, loads of people saying the same thing, they don't understand, like I say, it's a good movie and everything. And then I went on Amazon.com, uh, and there's a few people in there saying, you know, I think so we've said it's one of Adam Sandler's best, and, you know, and, and then, uh, and this was after I'd watched it, and, and it's, it's a really good movie, it's a nice, solid movie, uh, and, like, just, this is something as well that, uh, again, like, I feel like, uh, I feel like I broke record that, uh, saying this all the time, so I just have a sip of my drink, black coffee, by the way, not booze, and it's not because I'm uh, hungover either, it's just, uh, not much milk in, uh, but I'll take it black. As you say, um, airplane joke, almost. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is one thing. Um, this is nothing that I've I've got like to, like a broken record, is that a lot of modern films, especially ones that are shot digitally, uh, I think they can look a little bit. Uh, and I assume this is shot digitally. Uh, oh, I'll just say that while I just went screen. Just said next Wednesday productions. Uh, but keep, I'll keep bear that in mind. Next Wednesday productions. Anybody who's a fan of uh, John Landis will instantly the the catch to attention. Uh, yeah, but a lot of uh, if this was shot on film, then this is this point's irrelevant. Uh, should have really checked the credits, and I did watch the credits last night. I was dying for a week, so maybe um, uh, I didn't catch it. Didn't catch me attention the first time around. But just say for argument's sake, this was shot digitally. It looks beautiful, and um, I think a lot of modern films, either way, you know, if the ones that are shot on film or the ones that are shot digitally, they've got this certain fakeness to them. 
with it uh, and it's really hard to explain and and you know sometimes i've thought oh this is shot digitally and shot on film and then this is shot on film and it's shot digitally uh but this film looks really nice and as uh, you know i feel like i say this all the time uh that uh a lot of um films to me either feel like real films or fake films uh, and it's almost universally almost like flicking a switch. And now, like I say, I, and again, I've, I know I've got a reputation for I'll watch anything pretty much. Uh, and, and when people say, oh, they'll watch anything, but they'll only watch that one thing, I'll watch pretty much anything. Like, uh, as long as there's a picture on the screen, and you know. But um, yeah, this film looks really good. And it is, like I say, it's really well put together. And it's like one of these things that I think once you get to about 30, 40, and at the end of the day, there is allegedly only like 20 stories. So you, more often than not, you're going to have seen some a bit similar. And, it, you know, it's got that quantum leap vibe to it. Uh, there used to be a, a show on in England. I'm not sure if it was British or not, but I think it was. A, a, a kid's cartoon called Mr. Ben, where it's about this guy who used to go in this fancy dress shop and he'd try on the different outfits and... He would like, you know, he would be a cowboy one day or an astronaut or something. And it's got that kind of, like I say, this, you know, oh, it's got like that twilight, his own vibe to it, where, um, uh, you know, sort of thing that, uh, you know, like, oh, what happens if I was this person for a day? What happens if that, that person for a day? Uh, but, uh, so yeah, there's definitely like, you know, versions of this film done before. But I was just really surprised that it just felt real, like, Almost within the first five ten minutes, because I know Adam Sandler has done serious films. Excuse me, and I know he has got um, a reputation for being, you know, doing really silly things in, in all the, and either really serious things. Oh, this was nothing as well. As soon as I saw this character smoking, and again, I, I'm sort of putting all my cards on the table right now that like. Uh, I've got this, even though I'm a non-smoker, I kind of love smoke, seeing smoking in movies, and I think, and I, I, I'm a fan of, like, some of my favourite people ever, are, are huge smokers, like people like John Carpenter and things like that, so I've always got this, like, I've always got my eye out for seeing smoking in films, and it's almost, without fail, um, again, it's not a deal breaker, it's not the be all and end all, but if smoking's in a movie, it just elevates it that little bit. If it's subconsciously or consciously there, there'll be films that I end up really loving, like even something as simple as 13 in on 30 or, 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 you know, not serious films, not horror films or, you know, not films where I like trying to be cool or whatever. But if, if they've got the nerve to put somebody smoking in a film now, I feel like you can tell that filmmaker's got some intent to sort of, um, uh, you know, to sort of do something that's a little bit ballsy, like I say, and again, like I say, it's not, it's just maybe, you know, I'm maybe reading some that's in there that's not really in there, but uh, it's just, again, something to keep, you know, your eye out for and that, but uh, yeah, I know Adam Sandler's got this reputation for sort of, um, you know, he can ping pong back and forth between serious and, you know, real wacky comedy and everything, but the thing that really surprised me about this film was, we think about some of his more recent stuff, and again, I'm really forgiving. Just generally, I'll give everything a huge pass, even if it's like the most terrible thing you've ever seen in your entire life. I'll go, oh well, maybe this, maybe that. But even recently, some of Adam Sandler films, like you know, even though the the last few, I I haven't seen Grown Ups two, but it looked really bad, and Grown Ups one wasn't great. Uh, uh, I've seen Jack and Jill, and again, I give it a pass because it was so insane but again you think uh, jack and jill it's a bit you know and then you know just uh, this is new that new film pixels looks pretty good but again he, like say he's got this sort of his last few films have just been you know maybe not you know maybe not hitting the mark and things like that uh but yeah so i was almost expecting this film that oh he's sort of you know an, an average guy just you know with a you know a boring job but just from the first five ten minutes, I was like, "Oh, I kept expecting him to say something really wacky or really funny." And then, and then he's just really bridging the gap between, like, where he's just a really silly character, and a really because like he he looks really genuinely miserable. <laughs> like it's like, oh, because I was just expecting, oh, okay, you know, wait for the you know mad joke and that. Um, and again, I'll say it when I'm thinking about it, but like a. You know, I know what a film makes at the box office again is not the be all and end all, but something that I always think that people, the really, 
easily, you know, whether deliberately or not, care to uh, not mention it. That like when a film hasn't done very well, there's so many factors within this. Like the, like I say, the last few Adam Sandler films, you know, might not, maybe, maybe not as good as you know normal. And then some of simple. I noticed as soon as this film started, is that it's not a Happy Madison film, which is uh, Adam Sandler's company. So. I was, you know, no disrespect to the companies involved, but how was this film distributed? Like, that, it doesn't come out until the 22nd of May in the UK, so I can't say from a UK perspective. But, um, like I say, it's not Happy Madison. You know, the companies are, you know, smaller companies. And I'm a big fan of American talk shows like, uh, you know, I watch like Jimmy Fallon, uh, uh, Conan, uh, even James Corden, who's just took over the Late Late Show. And I think I've normally uh, got me ear to the ground, like, you know, just seeing, you know, when people are on American talk shows promoting things and things like that. And to the best of my knowledge, and unless I'm just being a little bit, you know, gauntless or whatever, that I can't remember Adam Sandler being on any of these shows to promote this film. And again, you know, very, very possibly could have been, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, some promotion work was done for this film, but I can't really remember seeing this film promoted very well. So, again, you know, how was it distributed? You know, just say it was on at your local cinema. Like when I went to see um, the last Clint Eastwood film, they acted in Trouble with the Curve. There was one showing at my local Odeon, like one showing at night, you know, like nine, you know, nine thirty at night and stuff like that. So it's a bit like this. What, you know, you know, was it on one screen? Was it on one showing a day? We, you know, how was it advertised in America? Uh, like I say I didn't see him promoted, and there's all these factors, and I've seen it happen. Time and time, time and time again, it's really interesting that uh, certain films have these reputations. And then the weird thing is, I know some films, you know, they deserve everything they get. You know, some like you know some of these like epic movies or disaster movies, and I don't, I don't mean films like Ben. I mean the actual film, epic movie or disaster movie. And you know, some films you watch, and you think, you know, Keith Lemon the movie or something. You think this film deserves everything it gets but some films like say Transformers the movie in the mouth of badness or a film like this where they've got this reputation for not doing very well nobody's ever heard of them but you usually find out four or five years after the fact that I, nearly every horror fan I know has seen in the mouth of madness nearly every fan of like sci-fi cartoons that I know has seen Transformers the movie and these are all these films that nobody supposedly saw nobody's watched these huge big flat movies uh, but they've normally done okay and and, and again this is say something with this film where I just I, I like that shit reminds me kind of reminds me of Daredevil a little bit but this film where again it's just like you know about like 12 minutes in or something and uh, I really did think that um, it's like something as simple as that there uh, you know, well, not something as simple as that, but oh, his mum's got Alzheimer's or, you know, dementia and sort of, um, uh, it just, it just, I felt myself instantly just feeling that I was being taken in a different direction. I was, I was expecting, you know, I don't know why, I was just expecting a wacky movie. And it, it has got elements of that in there, but I'll say just while it was just on screen, uh, but the, the, when I said at the start, the, one of the companies called Next Wednesday Productions or Next Wednesday was in the title. Anybody who's a fan of um, John Landis knows that um, any time he used uh, an idea from his original script, See Next Wednesday, he put it in one of his movies, so in trading places you see a See Next Wednesday poster, or somebody will say See Next Wednesday, and you know, the stupid or something. Um, and uh, when that went, so when they come up at the start, it said Next Wednesday Productions. I thought I instantly thought of um, John Landis. I thought, oh, cool, John Landis. Uh, and then, yeah, after that, I didn't think much of it. But I'm a sucker for reading, you know, into things. So uh, it was it was on the forefront of my mind a little tiny bit. You know, it was just it was planted that seed. And then when he's using um, one of his uh, when he was using the machine that he uses before the sort of uh, the, the one there, it says Landis on it. And I was like, you are kidding me. It says that Landis Model 88. It very well could be a real machine. It could just be pure coincidence. Uh, and then I thought, oh, that's cool. You know, like, they're, um, you, know, it's got, I, you know, just something, something as simple as that was good enough for me. I was like, oh, wow, cool. The, the machine uses this Landis and next Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. And then um, about five, ten minutes into it, I didn't realise his name's Max. John Landis' son is named Max Landis. And, and again... Maybe pure coincidence, 
you know, I, and again, I know, uh, again, you know, first put my hand up that I'm a sucker for a coincidence, but like, again, I, I'll have to see if any there is any connection to that because I just, it just sort of, I just thought it was brilliant. This is something as well. Sorry, I just have another drink. Uh, but this is something I always think when people say um, a cliche or um, a trope, as they say nowadays, um, I always love how, like, say, um, and it kind of makes sense because newer technology, even though I love, you know, the internet computers and things, that older technology has always got that it could be haunted, it could be magical, it could be mysterious. And I kind of love that, that, like, you know, the. Uh, you know, in the ring, it was a VHS video, which is ridiculous because you can still buy a new, new VHS video now. Yeah. But like, you know, anything that's a bit mechanical, a bit clockworky, it's always that ooh, 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 you never know. So I kind of again like, oh, me, me, electrical machines working. I've had to go to this clockwork machine, and it's it's giving me these, it's got these powers. Steve Buscemi as well. I, 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 again, I kind of like this. This is something I always think is kind of cool, but. Um, that like uh, something like Adam Sandler again got this reputation for being you know this is wacky guy, and then something like Steve Buscemi he's got this represent he's say got this reputation for being this dead serious actor and really classy and really cool, and they've done like ten films together or something like that, and and another thing about Adam Sandler where. I'm sure he's sick to the back teeth of, of hearing this, but I think it's worthy of a mention, is that he's got... I've heard so many times where people say he's just such a nice guy. And I do kind of love that, though, that, like, uh, you know, like, you know, again, so many sort of cool um, movie stars, like, you know, they've got reputations for, you know, drinking and doing drugs and womanising or whatever, and then it's kind of like, um, you know, just like, yeah, he's a nice bloke. Well, that's interesting, though, because uh, after watching this, I really felt like something pickled. <laughs> Like uh, I could, uh, yeah. I brought some. To my friend later, I brought some Barry Norman uh, spicy pickled onions the other day. Very nice. Uh, oh, that, but that was another thing as well. When I was saying about how this film, uh, straight from the off, I knew it was something a little bit. You know, there's probably a bit more to it. Really, I should have, you know, should have noticed it before. Really, but like the signs were there. But I remember seeing the trailer when I saw the trailer, and seeing that his name is Simpkin. And again, probably reading you know, completely into this, that's something that's not there. But that just reminded me of, like, you know, the phrase, the cobbler. I've never heard an American say the word cobbler before. But in England, I, I live about five minutes away from about three cobblers. Uh, and then I could picture a British uh, sitcom being called, you know, having a character called Simpkin in there. It's got that, you know, classic, you know, Ronnie Corbett, sorry, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, that kind of uh, vibe to it, uh, you know, like, uh, Timothy, you know, that Simpkin, you know, I can imagine that, you know, it's got that kind of a bit of a geeky name, you know, that, you, you know, I just, again, it's just, it gives you that extra three dimension. I don't mean, you know, putting the glasses on. Oh, that's nothing as well, like method bands in this, but, this is one thing, and I've probably said this on loads of commentaries too, but again, I think it's worthy of a mention that, I, you know, again, I like a little bit of, you know, you know, pr um, you know one thing, you know, what, you know, very mild superpower that I've got is I like a lot of stuff, you know, big fan of all different kinds of movies, all different kinds of music, you know, I watch, you know, a bit of anything I like, you know, going around an art gallery or going in a pub or watching, you know, cartoons or you know millions of different things but anyway long story short i like rap music uh and I, even though i love rap music you know and i know i'd love to be as cool as like you know 99 percent of rappers one thing i always think is really funny like because oh, that's method man but when the names are coming up at the start one thing i always think is really funny about rappers is they always have ridiculously cool rap names they're always like Weapon Master X or Cool Guy Zero or something. Nobody's ever been called those rap names, by the way. But they've always got a cool name that's like ridiculously cool that like, you know, you sort of you know, couldn't be that cool if you tried kind of thing. And then um, when you see the real name, they're always ridiculously geeky. Talking about names like Simkin and things like that. They're always named like Ian Smith or Dave Jones or... 
Dwayne Johnson. That actually might be a name. Uh, no, <laughs> Dwayne Dwayne Johnson. He's not a rapper. Anyway, that's beside the point. But they're always got ridiculously geeky. And, and again, as soon as that came up at the start, I was like, oh, that's a cool, uh, you know, the, like it's the uh, rap guy in this film with uh, a cool name and a geeky name as well. Excuse me. But what's really funny as well, again, like about this film, that um, because, like I say, it's got that, you know, like I say, anybody over 20 will have seen a film that's got these elements in there, like somebody who's uh, jumped into somebody else's body or been reincarnated. Um, Down to Earth was another recent film with Chris Rock where, you know, it's like hilarious consequences because, um, you know, he's, uh, you know, a black guy, if you're an old white man or a woman or something, you know, it's always, uh, you know, like an hilarious situations kind of thing. Uh, and like, say, you know, there's a big vice versa, there's been a million of these films like Quantum Leap and, you know, like, say, uh, there's been so many. I mean, you know, these are literally off the top of my head. Uh, I like this shot where you, where you see him working and, the, and then the camera pans in, the, the slow pan in, it's pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, but the thing is, though, what I quite liked about this film was um, it didn't go exactly how I was expecting because again you know you think oh if I was somebody else I'd uh, you know I'd be this or I'd be that you know I'd be a cool guy or I'd uh, you know or you know I'd be you know good at sports or something but like there it was like a dead body like I've never seen you know anybody kind of transfer themselves into a dead person like quite like that you know especially in this kind of thing and just even something as simple as when, like, um, uh, he, he needs extra shoes. He didn't, like, go up to the guy and say, um, oh, can I buy the shoes off you? He, like, robbed him and stuff. And I was really surprised by that because I was off expecting him to say, like, oh, can I sort of give you some money for those shoes? And I was like, oh, that's weird. And when he, like, steals a car and sort of joyrides in it, I was kind of like, oh, that's really sort of... Again, it's not that, you know, that's a really nice shot there. Again, though, this film looks really nice. Um, but again, not the be-all and end-all, not a deal-breaker, but, like, I just thought, again, it's got that extra little element to it there. If this had been, uh, you know, done by lesser filmmakers or, you know, if they tend to just add that nerve to sort of just go that little bit further, then I feel... You know, that it would have just been, oh, I'm in, I'm in somebody else's body. Let's have a shenanigans. I've always liked that. The, again, uh, the, the, like I said, it's a cliche. It's probably too too strong a phrase, but um, I've always kind of liked that that sort of um, you've seen in a million films, but where somebody's doing something a little bit strange, and the other person is looking at them like, what are you doing? <laughs> But from that, from when you followed the main character from uh, through a uh, through a situation, you know, like he's just checking that guy's shoes, you know, and then he's just like. Uh, but this is again one thing I love about like um, Adam Sandler films. This and this is one thing that again Adam Sandler does get credit for, but again, I think it's worthy of a mention is that something when an Adam Sandler film's working. And for the most part, this is the case. Even, you know, one of my favourite Adam Sandler films is Little Nicky. I don't think that's not any enough credit. But even something like Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, The Waterboy, uh, you know, The Wedding Singer, Blended, so many Adam Sandler films. The thing that I really love is that they've got heart and they've got the characters that you really sort of, you, you sort of, feel for. And like there, there, he was like talking to that news guy and then, eventually that news guy comes back into it later on but i really kind of um i kind of love that like because again it's like a indefinable x factory type thing i don't mean the show x factory i mean the the thing x factor that you can't you could be like best actor in the world best musician in the world best director in the world but just loading that film with characters that believable and like say even someone to, like that was fantastic <laughs> fantastic I can't remember where it was described on him um, Wikipedia when I, I, I had a quick look at Wikipedia last night about this film and it said something like 2014 Adam Sandler uh, fantasy realism romantic 
romantic comedy, but it was all these words, all these descriptive words that, like, uh, it was, like, fantastical, magical, and it, and it is, but I was, like, normally it'd be, like, comedy, horror, <laughs> you know, like, or, yeah, or not comedy, horror, but it's normally, it's, like, um, uh, you know, it's normally just, like, one or two words, and this was about five words to describe it, which, again, it's, like, actually, there's something about it, you know? But, but this is always something though as well and again like you know once you get that sort of um, thing in the front of your mind or if it's just something that you look out for because like over the years like say I, I've always kind of prided me as, myself on uh, you know you know not being racist or xenophobic and I've always loved stuff from other cultures even more so than stuff from my own country I mean I'm always just loves you know things from Japan or you know loads of my favourite things from American or whatever and I, mean, I love you know, loads of things from Canada and different things in Europe or whatever. But like there, there when he was like, you know, a Chinese guy or whatever, and when he's like a black guy in a bit, and you just think, ooh, is this racist? <laughs> like, you know, you know, it's got that just, it's just like, you know, just keep second guessing myself, thinking, ooh, uh, uh <laughs> you know. But it's, uh, you know, I just, you know, the thing as well, and again. Again, I don't think it was really forced in this because, like, usually when somebody's pretending to be somebody else, there's really of the obvious circumstances where you can tell, oh, he's here, uh, he's got like a twitch or something, or, you know, some really obvious thing. But the fact that he's always, when he's the other person, he's always wearing that grey jacket and sometimes the red and black scarf. But that's something where, um, like, because I can be a bit of an idiot sometimes there. I think it's nice to sort of have that, like, sort of visual cue that, like, oh, yeah, he's that guy. But, again, I don't think in this one, a couple of times people are like, oh, why are you wearing that coat or whatever? But I felt like it was sort of, you know, you know, quote-unquote believable that, like, it just, it give it that, because, again, you know, why would he keep changing his coat, I guess? But just, it's got, it just felt, you know, and, again, that's another thing. He's got that blue bag. Again, probably completely reading into something that's not there, but there used to be um, a cartoon, I think it was like a, a European cartoon made by a couple of different European countries called Sport Billy, where this little kid had a blue sports bag and he could pull stuff out of the bag and it would be like a sports car or a plane or something. But this kind of reminds me of that, where he can pull stuff out of a blue bag and he's all of a sudden a different, you know, cool character or something. Yeah, but this is the bit you were, uh, like, I, I, again, like I say, um, even though the film's been on, you know, touching half an hour now, that, like, I was sort of thought, oh, he's, you know, I thought, oh, you know, because he's Adam Sandler. I know he, he does end up, uh, later on, he, you know, he does become a little bit of a softer character, uh, but I was, like, quite surprised when he's, like, he just, I, I had a bit of money there that he would, he would have said he wanted him for, you know, just for charity or something, but then when he just stole, and I was like, oh wow, and that like how he steal, like how he stole this car again. Where I think, like I say, and again, you know, make it stuff bigger than it is. But like in like if this was a more generic movie, I feel like they would have excused this away somehow. That like you know, oh he was doing it because he had to get somewhere quick or. Or, you know, he would have, you know, he's been drunk or something, so he wouldn't have been responsible for his actions, you know, with no stacks of but you know what I mean? That I felt like they would have explained it away a bit more ways, like there. He literally just stole some of his shoes and joyrided in a car. And then, and again, like these scenes here, I feel like these scenes are really, there's so much truth in these scenes there. I think anybody who's ever sort of, um, you know, that like, like I was, you know, going to my parents' houses and stuff like that, and, and, you know, and things like that, that like, and if anybody who is a little bit geeky or, you know, anybody who isn't like, uh, you know, like, a, and it's like, you can tell he's just like, you know, he just does his job and he keeps himself to himself kind of thing, and, you know, he ain't like a ladies' man or anything like that, and I think anybody who's, who's got that, will identify with these scenes that you know you just like you know you know just like yeah you know i'm just following that and i think that again again i don't think these scenes i don't think you can really you either know to shoot one of these scenes or you don't i think if this was um and again i, I do i do like you know companies like platinum dunes and stuff but i i, I feel like you know, companies of that ilk that uh you know or you know people that were just doing you know oh let's show a guy that's a little bit you know 
geeky or a little bit like you know who ain't got no friends or something they, they, you know they'd have glasses with a plaster on in the middle or you know they'd be reading comics or something and, and you know but it, I don't feel like this is like a bit more realistic where like you know he is just a guy that goes work and his mum says to him you know oh have you, have you had a good day at work oh yeah, yeah whatever you know you know it's like yeah it was alright but I feel like that you know it's just it feels real, but that this is an interesting thing where when it plays out later on. But and again, this is nothing like Dustin, like people like. I think this is like you know something like Dustin Hoffman who's in this film, uh, who plays his uh, father. The the thing I kind of love about Adam Sandler, and even I, I'm an Adam Sandler fan, so it doesn't bother me anyway. But and this kind of thing because of that, you know. I try not to be an arsehole, it doesn't bother me anyway, full stop, but I think what must, must really piss off people that Adam Sandler, fin, uh, sorry, I used me say again, what must really piss people off that aren't Adam Sandler fans is that he gets to work with everybody, like Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman, Steve Buscemi, you know, just this breadth of incredible talent and, you know, all these amazing musicians and all these great filmmakers and, and people must be like, how the hell is he doing that? You know, but like, I kind of like that, that like, again, there's like, you know, I, I think, I don't think Adam Sandler, you know, he's ever sort of, um, you know, I don't think he always, he's only got incriminating photographs of these people or he's like, you know, bribed them or something like this. Like, you know, for whatever reason, he's, you know, if you can get in that circle of Adam Sandler fans, Adam Sandler, you know, that group that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that he works with, I feel like that, you know, it sort of, you know, it just becomes quite natural to him, like, you know, that, you know, I work with, uh, you know, I work with uh, Al Pacino, <laughs> yeah. What's funny, again, because I'm such a nerd, I was looking for J&B behind that bar, I couldn't see any, uh, again, always a sign of a good movie if you see uh, J&B in, in there, although I didn't see any, so I forget what I just said, but this is a thing as well, and I, I think this is so difficult to get right, and I think this film kind of did it, but where you see another actor pretending to be, like obviously he's meant to be Adam Sandler, uh, that um, uh, it's kind of like, um, uh, sometimes I feel like it's a bit forced, but I feel like that that kind of almost, you think, yeah, that's Adam Sandler there, like, you know, even though it's not, like, you know. But I do find this interesting, what I know about dating, you can write on the back of a postage stamp, but this is one thing I have noticed that, like, say, if I have, you know, gone drinking in a pub, I usually drink at home, but if I uh, go drinking in a pub and you see, all some ladies across the thing, ooh, ladies, and then I forget that, oh, I'm this massive geek, and, uh, and a lot of women just, you know, just don't even acknowledge you, you know, not, you know, not just some big, you know, huge debate, but I feel like that, like, loads and loads of times, I've been in situations where, like, like I've, when I've had jobs or different things, and if you are, like, a geeky bloke, you think, oh, I'm a nice guy, or try to be polite, or friendly, or whatever, and you don't get no sort of nothing at all, like, women just like, yeah, whatever, yeah, see you later, and then, like, uh, you'll just see somebody who you can tell is cool, and they flock around, and it's, it's so interesting there. Over the years and years, I've got a little bit more confident, and I do think it's interesting that, like, uh, for years and years, You'll always hear people say, and, and, and kind of men the same a little bit. Like, you know, they'll, they'll say one thing, oh, I want, you know, a woman that's got big boobs or long legs or long hair or whatever. Or you'll get women that say, oh, they want a funny man who, or somebody who's like, you know, this or that, the other. But they kind of want the exact reverse. And I do think it's funny, though, where things like confidence, though, that I have noticed, though, that just even in myself, that even if even just very slight things, but when I've had my hair cut, or, I don't know, I have something, when I have my hair cut, like that, I put this weird pause on there, <laughs> but um, when I have my hair cut, or if I wear some half-decent clothes, the reaction is completely different, like, you know, like, I'm the same person inside, I always, like, say, try to be nice, polite, whatever, but, like, just, like, usually I'm, you know, I'm, I've got a beard, and usually I'm wearing some heavy metal t-shirts, or some ripped jeans, or some terrible clothes, and things like that, but I have noticed, like you say, when I've been, you know, if I've ever been somewhere where I've had to wear a shirt and tie, or I've had to get dressed up or something like that, and the difference, just the difference how people react to you is incredible, and you think, well, I'm the same person I was yesterday, but just because I've had my hair cut and wearing a suit, a suit, a suit jacket, it's like, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're, you're hip, man. <laughs> This is always interesting, though, as well. And this is one thing, I think, with these films, though. And 
I think there's no there's no real way of getting around it. But the one thing I do think is funny about, like I say, I know I've said a few of these films, and you know the ones off the you know, off the top of my head, you know, like all these body swap movies and and things like that. Uh, and like I say, there's there's a million if you wrote wrote them all down. But one inherent flaw I think these films have got is the on face value, if you just think. Let's do a body swap movie, or when somebody you know, becomes older or younger, or turns for a man or woman, or whatever. That on paper, you think, brilliant, you know, hilarious situations, you know, inherently funny because you know it's like, oh, I don't understand this culture, and you know, people say things, you know, that you know that show that they're not that person. But I've heard a few people talk about this scene on the internet, and like when I watched it last night. I didn't really think much. You think, oh, it's hilarious because there's a woman in the shower and you might see boobs and things like that. But then what? And then, but what's really funny is because, because at the end of the day, all these body swap movies, the, somebody's pretending to be somebody that they're not. So even if it's like a man pretending to be a woman, or you know, like when in in big, I want to be big or whatever, and all this kind of stuff. That like, but that instantly. If you watch the film once and don't think much of it, you think, oh yeah, yeah, he was pretending to be this guy, pretending to be that guy. But then, if you watch it, if you rewatch it again, or if you just think about it from you know, from a certain point of view, uh, to oh, it's a check the Comlink channel by the way. It's a pretty cool channel, <laughs> not sponsored by them, but the uh, Comlink Star Wars channel. Uh, but as you say in Star Wars, you know certain things from a certain point of view, you can argue a certain point. And like with this, you just think, oh, it's hilarious that like because um, he's like, you know. He's really this geeky guy, but he's only a cool guy, and there's a, you know, a naked woman in the shower, and ooh, you could have sex with me, and all this kind of stuff. But then, I've heard people on the internet saying that, you know, really, if he'd had sex with her, that would have been rape. And you're like, ooh, that's kind of an interesting point. <laughs> yeah, and that's one thing I think these films where, again, you know, you, you people can, oh, there's VHS, VHS tapes, yay! Uh, you, can, uh, you can read too much stuff, and oh, there's record play too, oh my god, this film's... Ancient technology and the CLT TV. Oh my God, no wonder that's fun. <laughs> but yeah, this I think that's something that um, it's you could read into this film so much that like, and again, I guess what gives it depth, I guess that like you know, it isn't just a case of. Uh, but again, like, like I say, it's inherent to all these movies, really. Uh, but I do kind of think that that is an interesting sort of way of reading these movies. There, like I say, on the one hand, it is just. Yeah, I think everybody at some point has thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could be that person? Like, one thing, as I say, I've always been a geeky guy, and I've always been skinny, and I've always not been very good at, like, you know, fighting and stuff, and things like that. And just every so often, I think, like, you know, you see Kane or Drew chasing from the Friday 13th movies, or, or Derek Mears, or somebody like that, who's Jason from the Friday 13th movies, I, I, I wouldn't like to be Jason Voorhees, but you think, I'd love to be a big, huge, strong, muscly guy, so I wouldn't get picked on, and, like, even now, like, occasionally, you know, like, I think, yeah, I'm 40, and I'm Hitman, and all this, and then every so often somebody goes, hey, Specky, you know, oh, oh, no, I'm still a skinny, geeky, nerdy guy, and just, you know, you think, yeah, wouldn't it be great if I was this huge, big muscle guy, and I wouldn't like to start fights, but wouldn't it be good if people didn't feel inclined to just pick on you, or wouldn't it be nice if you were a cool guy, or wouldn't it be nice if you, so, I think these films are, I think there's a, a lot of wish, for, wish fulfillment in them that I don't think, I don't think anybody doesn't think, you know, hasn't thought for a second, oh, would it be cool if I could be this person, just even if it's for like an hour or something, you know, wouldn't be great if I could walk downtown and, you know, just be, you know, you know, a completely different person. So I, I think you can see why they make so many of these films and it's, I don't even know if you could necessarily even call it, I guess you could call it even like a subgenre that there was so, like they actually just called him Max. I mean, Oh, oh, when like when she when somebody called him Max for the first time, or when it dawned on me that he was called Max, I've got to check the um, John if there is a John Landis or Max Landis connection in this film because again, like I say, uh, uh, but again, it, 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 um, another thing that reminded me of um, Landis was um, an American Well for London when the guy's friend gets killed and turns into a, a dead guy, and instantly, well, not instantly, but I thought, oh, that kind of reminds me of that, but again. You know, reading it too much into it, so uh, I quite like that as well. That's quite like a neat touch the way she looks at him. Like, uh, there's you know, uh, again, I feel like that that's like um, again, something in one of these kind of films where you can easily get right or wrong, where somebody will like 
pull a face and say, what's that person doing? Like, you know, again, like I say, but I feel like they're done in, like, somebody who's not quite subtle, that can be sort of almost... Um, uh, oh, that was one thing as well um, in the credits. I noticed it said um, product placement. And so a lot of these companies, and I, quite, I think this is quite sweet in a way that, again, normally you think of product placements and you think of like Aston Martin and the James Bond movies or, you know, you know all these different things, and, you, know, the, you know, all these sort of um, you know, huge companies and things. But like one thing in the credits, it said something like uh, Shoemakers of America or, so, or, or something like that. And, um, and, uh, and it was some, like, pickle, some pickle company. And I was like, wow, are all these, like, c- companies, like, uh, you know, you know, like, even these little, you know, all these little elements in this film, are they all, everything in this film, like, a legit thing? Like, even, I don't know if, like, news channels, a real news channel, or whatever. But I just thought it was kind of, and again, again, a scene like this, and I even thought it last night, where, um, Really sweet, even I, you know, really did sort of, you know, bring a tear to me, that kind of thing. That like, because again, because it kind of creeped up on me, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, but like, um, you think, oh, it's really sweet. He's got a pair of his dad's shoes. He's gonna pretend to be his dad, and he's that's the one thing his mum wants is to see her husband again and things. And it's really sweet, really nice. And then it's just instantly got this like. It's got this really sweet, you know, 95% of the scene is, like, really sweet, really nice. Oh, my God, that's really, really nice. And then it's, like, it's just, like, ooh, it's got that little weird... <laughs> this is like, this is like, but, again, I guess it's... Uh, yeah. But that's another thing as well, where you see it in loads of American movies, and I hate the fact of, you know, because nothing worse than when I think when you, you know, foreigners, <laughs> and I'm saying that is a complete, you know, when you people talk about British things like, oh, does everybody have a posh accent, and does, does everybody have a butler, and uh, does uh, everybody wear a bowl hat, and you're like, no, <laughs> you know, when people talk about England and stuff, so it's like, again, I hate the thought of, you know, thinking about American things, and, uh, you know, especially since the internet, and you see, you know, loads of people in America exactly the same as everybody in England, which of course, that's how it is, but just every so often, little things like, in loads of American movies, you see houses with basements, and in this country, I've been in about two houses that have had basements, and and you know little things like they go. Oh, you don't really see that very often. Or like when people have Chinese takeout, they're always in these cool cartons, and you don't very rarely see them in this country. But their uh, their settee or couch is um, or a bunch of people sitting couch in this country. But their um, their settee has got a plastic covering on it, and that's something you see in tons of American things. I think so, and then one instantly springs to mind is the Van Halen video, uh, Can't Stop Loving You. You see somebody spill some uh, drink on, on a couch and it's covered in plastic and stuff. Uh, but, like, I've never seen anybody do that in this country. I, I, and but then, then let's like, say it's got this vibe, but I mean, it makes sense to be fair that you know, again, that's something you know, you don't realize as a kid that when I was a kid and you dive all over the city or just. Lozic on it. We said Lozic. Uh, <laughs> uh, that you know, you would just like you know, uh, just lie down on this uh, settee. It's not like a word. God's word. Uh, but you would just you know lay about on the settee, and your parents would always be like, "Get off that settee, God's like you know." Or put some some Nazis don't let the dogs or cats on the settee. Uh, but you know, you th- when you, but when you people are about settees, and you're like, oh, you know, screw you, granddad. You know, it's like, hey, what do you care? But you find out settees cost like uh, you know, four or five hundred quid, and you're like, yeah, don't put your feet on the settee; it's uh, it's expensive. <laughs> you know, I'm obviously exaggerating. I never do that, uh, uh, but uh, the, yeah, that like say so it, it does make sense why why you would put like um, a plastic covering on. You know, why you would keep a plastic covering on it just to protect it, like that. But it must be so uncomfortable though. Or you know, you try to watch TV and it's always squeaking or, uh, or anything. Like like what's really cool as well about this film as well and um again i guess it's the main through line of of the plot is that you know all these big cities they aren't just the big sort of huge buildings and everything's all these all these people in there and that's another thing as well that, you know, since, you know, when you get older and that, and, you know, you just used to driving through a town or a village or something like that, and you don't think just how many people are in that scene, and this is like another thing as well, I don't want to bring the mood down, but like, it's like, oh wow, this scene, like, you know, and, and, and it's like, you know, years ago, like when I was a kid, and like I say, I was quite lucky that, you know, 
you know, yeah, you know, none of my relatives really died when I was a kid. But like now, like you know, just getting older and now, and like saying the mum's passed away and stuff, and you're like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, not this soon. Oh, you know, when I first watched Guardians, of, when I watched Guardians of the Galaxy, and I remember thinking I went because uh, it came out, or I was going to see Hercules on the same day, the um, Dwayne Johnson movie. And it suddenly kept saying, go see Gods of the Galaxy, go see Gods of the Galaxy, you know, it's, it's going to be brilliant. Uh, so I went to see Gods of the Galaxy instead, and in the first five minutes, like, uh, whoops, sorry about that, uh, uh, in the first five minutes or so, um, you see um, Starkiller, his, uh, his mum dying, it's like, oh, bit the wrong film. Obviously, it uh, turned out good in the end, uh, spoilers. <laughs> But again, it seems like this as well, because a number of times, like I say, I've been, let's like say, when there's been like a, a, a family gathering, and I've I've just gone out into the backyard to avoid people. And that this scene is, again, it's just these scenes that, again, I, you know, like I say, I don't want to over-egg something. It's that phrase. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't want to uh, over-egg or don't over, over-emphasize something, but just uh, it's sort of, it just got that belief, it just got that believability, that sort of, real truthfulness to it that you think yeah i've been in situations like that where you know even if it's a happy situation or a party situation or like you know the two barbecues i've ever been to you know sometimes you just think oh god you know you just want to get away from it. you just you go in a guy they go in the go outside or go in the room where nobody is and just you know whack the tv on or you know put a horror film on or you know have a quiet beer to yourself somewhere so i can identify with this scene you know you know quite a bit because i've definitely been the uh, nerdy geeky guy that just wants to keep yourself to myself and god <laughs> gone somewhere else but the, this year this uh, you know like I say all the all these scenes here just got this like extra sort of you know like just say there it was just like again like, he just looks someone who's like really just pissed off uh, but again this is that this is that thing where um, uh, I, I thought this was like, again where somebody like say like like method man that like it's interesting that like when you see i, I obviously adam sandler being him that but it's obviously him because obviously that like i i kind of like though like when you get people that can flip flop between these like real like again when i'm saying if you know i'd love to be like a really big tough macho guy but at the same time i'd love to be like a nice guy and i do kind of i've seen ice cube do it a couple of times like um, when he's been on conan and stuff but like kind of like sort of be aggressive like you like going from being this like really nice guy to like aggressive guy and stuff and i kind of i love that like when you see actors that can just turn it on that like uh, can be like a dead nice friendly you know you kind of thing and then just like oh my god this guy's gonna kick my ass <laughs> I love how that sign though that says hey, must have ticket and then it's kind of like uh, nobody ever's got the ticket. But what is interesting though of things like uh, cobblers or shoe menders though uh, it is kind of really cool though in a way that like like I say, I know I live in like a you know a rural market town kind of thing, you know, relatively big town, but you know it's like you know it's still like a eight hundred year old market town kind of thing. Uh, and I like I say, I live you know I could probably walk five minutes in you know either direction and you know find about two or three cobblers. But it's kind of cool though in this day and age of like internet and uh, mobile phones and all this kind of real cool, you know, cutting edge technology that, uh, you know, there is, you know, people that still have the shoes fixed. And I guess, I guess you kind of, I guess you kind of do, don't you? I mean, but it's just, it just, uh... but again, this is a scene where, again, you know, you know, is what it is. But like, I was not expecting a scene like this to be in this film where you like, you know, I thought Method Man would be this character where he's like, yeah, I'm a bit rough around the edges and, you know, I, and that. But they were like, he beats his wife and then he's just beat up those people in that shop and and things like that. You know, he's like, he, he just like, you know, he's got guns and he just seems like he kills people and things. And it's like, you're like, ooh, again. No, I think in a, a film like this, normally you get a bad guy who's 
a little bit dodgy. It was a little bit like, oh, I'm the bad guy. And then you're like, oh, no, he's a proper bad guy. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, and I, I thought this was like a neat touch as well, though, the way, like, because he has got all these shoes and he can be a different person. And, that, yeah, because you would never, you know, if this was real, you would never think that, um, you know, that sort of, if you saw five different people following, you would never think that they were the same person, because why would you? But this was another thing as well. I, I think any anybody from my generation who watches this film will say the same thing. I'm like 99% sure of it. But the, one of the first things that, like, again, there's certain, like, tropes or cliches that, like, I absolutely love and adore and, like, I never, ever get sick of seeing them. And one of them is the... Uh, a unscrupulous business that is trying to uh, take over a small community and knock down a building. I've seen it a million times in film. The big example is Patrick's Not Included, and the building in this just looks identical to Patrick's Not Included. But I've seen it so many times in things like The A Team, Night Rider, Gremlins 2. You just see it over and over and over again. But like, um, again, this is the story element in this that I, I, I just thought, again, been done you know it's kind of like something that you're super familiar with but at the same time again sort of in the wrong hands you know you feel like oh okay but again i'm a sucker for it so i, I kind of lapped it up but it was just like oh it's like just seeing that little story element brought back into it's really really good so uh, it was kind of cool to see that But again, though, when I was saying about things like those, say, just how um, things like, just even from my own personal experience, just changing my clothes or, you know, just changing how I have my hair and things, they completely change here. But when you see, like, Method Man and he's, like, all, like, super angry and, like, oh, my God, are you like, oh. But, like, there, oh, because, you know, in the, in the framework of the film, he's bent behind the panel, but it's obviously him. So it's like you think... Just the, just the difference between just, you know, just your posture and just, just you know, your, your tone of voice there, how it completely changes you. Uh, once again, because I can just, you know, have, you know, just being aware of this stuff, but um, just noting all them CDs there, that that's quite funny that, like, uh, you know, so far in this film I've seen a record player, a VHS player, uh, a, a foot-powered sewing machine and uh, CDs. <laughs> That's another thing, thinking about it though, when I was at um, junior school, I'm sure there was like a hand sewing machine there. I don't know if we ever used it. Uh, that's a cool gun, so it's not Mad Max. It's like a lightsaber. That that's kind of good because that, that's like one of the few little moments in this film where I think I can't remember if that scene's in the trailer or not, but I bet it is. That like that's like for the most part, this is you know bridging this weird gap between you know serious Adam Sandler and funny Adam, Sandler, but that is I think pure Adam Sandler that like you know that that, that just like kind of tasering himself. <laughs> you know, this is you know you could see that in a million Adam Sandler films. I don't think you'd ever batter an eyelid. You know. But even that, that's always, uh, that's an always, uh, again, like, you know, I think nowadays it's really, um, it's become such a, a cliche in itself to sort of, you know, talk about cliches in films, but there's certain things that, like, when they pop up in a film, because they are relatively rare, that it's like, you know, but seeing a person with the same person, it's always it's kind of a, like, catching, you're like, oh, it's, it's the same. <laughs> Oh, that was nothing as well about the music in this film. That um, again, that just you know, again, you know, just after a bit, you know, when you've watched the film for like you know, 30, 40 minutes or fifty-three minutes in this case, that um, kind of uh, you know, you become aware of oh, it's you know, the tone of this or you know, the little, the little, the little things it's doing, like you know, sort of, uh, like say, just me smoking in the film, or you know, just like say, oh, Adam Sandler does seem genuinely like bitter and pissed off and things. But just something as simple as the music as well. That like, uh, I think there has been a couple of times when there has been, you know, pop songs in there and, and things like that. But again, I think you know, I think lesser filmmakers would sort of think, oh, let's you know, score this movie with like you know, 
we are cool like hip hop guys or you know like have some heavy metal band in there or or you know have like you know you know like low but like the way the music is you know you know its own thing and it's like it's a real cool score and everything i think that's another thing as well like say you know just makes you know just gives this film this extra level and I really like say, um, you know, we're talking about this, you know, you know, the, you know the dead die kind of thing. But I'm always like, I say, I think this film will be one of them films where, you know, morons on the internet will probably talk about this film until the cows come home, like you know, oh, that Adam Sandler film that did that bad. Uh, but I think that's been one of them films where, uh, you know, part of this initial wave of it coming out, I won't be surprised if it's one of them films that only pops up pops up on Italian once in a blue moon or you know it, it becomes really rare and that you know and sort of thing but be one of those that everybody everybody who knows it really likes you know you would you'll talk to people like Adam Sandler and be like oh you know you'll mention the really obvious Adam Sandler films which is fair enough but then the, you know something like this I think it'll be one of those like Little Nicky I was always really surprised because I always thought a lot of Little Nicky I mean again being a fan of music and things especially like heavy metal and stuff that like I love Little Nicky and that's one of those films where you never really see it that often. You don't, you know, and it, 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 and it's like you know, you don't really hear people mention it, and you know, and or even like say that, that new uh, Adam Sandler Drew Animal film Blended was really good, uh, but I feel like that that'll be like, you know, the you know the black sheep of the family, you know, the run to the litter kind of thing that like. Um, that uh, you know, it'd be the film that you know, you know, people go, oh yeah, you know, if you say to me what's your favourite Adam Sandler Drew Barrymore film, they'll say something like, um, uh, you know, they'll say, you know, Wedding Singer, Fifty First Dates, and then Blended will be, be a you know, a far third line, you know, kind of thing. But I think it's, you know, I think it's pretty good. But again, what's kind of interesting as well, that like, and again, this is where I think this film sort of, again, just changed gear a bit or, you know, went in a direction I wasn't expecting. Because when I, when I saw he got those watches, because I remember uh, the Method Man's character said, you know, they're worth a fortune and some of these watches are, you know, ridiculous amounts of money. So I thought he was going to take those watches, you know, use the money to get his mother's headstone or, or you, know, for, you know, do whatever with the money. But I thought, but then when, like, he, he went to get the extra money, and I was like, oh, it, it, it just, and, and again, I, I know I can be a bit of an idiot sometimes, and I'll be like, oh, well, you know, I didn't see that coming, and, you know, you know, what's going on here kind of thing, but, like, I was, I just was not expecting that, because as soon as he found the watch, he's like, oh, that's the only element he's going to take, and then he's like, but again, I guess it's him. He's put himself in an hilarious situation, and this is this thing, though, where this film, like, even if you listen to the music, it's got this playful you know, kind of a little bit of a sort of, you know, fun tone to it. Just only a little bit, but a little bit. And then it's like, he walks in this room and it's like, there's this guy being beaten to death. And you're like, oh. And again, I think this is where, where if this film does struggle with the, the general uh, populace, that I think it will be this weird shift in tone the way there is some kind of really silly gags and, you know, sort of little moments that you like, oh, Adam Sandler's in high heels, oh, that's hilarious, he's, he's a man who's a woman. <laughs> but then you've got these elements like this where it's like, I mean, that's like, I don't think I, you know, I'm not easily shot, so I'm not getting, but I find a lot of people would be like, oh, that's, you know, it's a, but what I do, again, though, it, you know, Obviously, I'm assuming anybody that's listening to this commentary has watched the film first, but if you haven't, um, spoilers, I should have said this ages ago. <laughs> uh, but the way, like, Eric lets this guy go, and then later on, this guy is going to, like, kill him. And you're like, oh. Because, like, if, if I was in this situation, I'd probably would do, you think, oh, yeah, you know, let him off, or, you know, don't kill him, or whatever. And then it's like, oh, he come back, he come back, kick him in the ass, that like, kind of thing. But again, that's like him. Um, little moments where I don't think he's breaking character necessarily but I feel like there's a little bit more of Adam Sandler's personality in there when he's like I shouldn't be in the situation what the hell am I doing and I, and I feel like that's something where uh, that uh, again these little moments I think like say sometimes like when um, uh, Jackie Chan did this serious film or what was it called uh, I think it was called 1914 I think I'm getting the date completely wrong but he did this really serious like period war epic kind of thing and then just 
just like, it was like a two hour, three hour movie or something, and then just every so often there's just like one little, one or two little moments where you're thinking, oh, that's a little call out, a little nod, nod of the hat to, you know, and I think that's summit with this film that like, um, I think uh, Adam Sandler just, you know, I don't, unknowingly or knowingly that they did, they did just say, oh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, I did just a little bit more of his sort of personality sort of coming out in, in just those scenes. Like I say, I, I, and again, I, I, I'm just looking into some of this not really, really there. I always love shots like, shots like that though as well, where you see a house with every single light on in the, <laughs> in the house. But even though, like, so, so, so something as simple as that, like, when, uh, you know, we should just give the finger to, like, Method Man, and, like, there's that, like, kind of look, like, what? Like, <laughs> kind of, uh, she looks really familiar, uh, and, and again, I, I'm a, a suck of stuff like this, but, like, you know, I think, well, have I seen that one before? Have I seen that one? Do you ever find uh, women cooking duck ragu attractive? But that's another thing as well, that we're certain things that we're, uh, are we... 30 years behind everywhere else, but like I, I'm sure in E.T., there's one part where uh, E.T.'s mum uh, gets um, uh, some drag cleaning back and she's the stain still, and she goes, God damn, ragu. And I never noticed that for years and years and years. Like, you know, I just barely knew what ragu was, even if we could get in the UK, which I don't think we could. And then, like, now, uh, you know, we've all got classy in the UK, we start having pasta and, you know, eating healthy or kind of trying to. Uh, and then, like, there, someone's just like, you know, she said, I'm cooking duck ragu, and you're like, oh, ragu, I, I know where it is now. Like, <laughs> so it took 30, 30 some odd years. But again, you talked about like uh, movie cliches. There, I think everybody uh, is like, even if it's only just for a fraction of a second, thought about that. Like, we're just have a big bank full of money. It's like it's like, ooh, <laughs> you know, or to be in some kind of scheme or caper or something. You know, it's like, oh no, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> I think we quite this, but probably this shot exists, but I quite like the thought of every single person who Adam Sandler's played in this film to all be standing in a row. <laughs> I've never thought about it to him. Um, I don't think Alan Covert was in this film, which is uh, he's in like you know nearly every Adam Sandler film as far as I know. But that's one thing as well. But uh, you know, talk about like having a big bag full of money, and I've probably said this on commentaries in the past, but. Uh, and I know everybody's different, and if everybody's the same, God, wouldn't this be boring? But like, uh, when you see these watches, though, that are 10,000, 20,000, you know, I, I, even if I was a multi, multi millionaire, and somebody said to me, you know, it's five million, do whatever you want with it, I'm pretty sure I'd probably do it. 100, 200 things before I bought an expensive watch. I mean, you know, I'd probably buy, you know, you know, I don't know what I'd buy for this, but I mean, you know, probably buy some of these incredible things and, you know, like, but, you know, like I say, you know, if anybody wants to spend, you know, 20 grand on a watch, I guess, you know, more power to them, right? I mean, it's like even like this scene here, and if you said to me, like, you know, even 10 minutes before the scene, come on, but if you said to me, uh, Method Man is going to die by getting a, a high yield shoe uh, stuck through his throat, uh, that had been worn by Adam Sandler, I'd be like, pardon uh, you know but again this is i can't this is um again um something that you could, could say as a cliche or something but i kind of love how like uh, when this all the situations happen and it's the craziest thing but when you know again you know you know again maybe a bit of an adam sandler trait coming through in the writing or just maybe he's in there from day one i don't know uh but the way he turns himself in and he's explaining it all to the police and they're like yeah okay you've got these special shoes blah 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 blah. and then they actually go to the place and the dead body's not there and i kind of love that's one thing again you could say it's this huge massive this reminds me of a deleted scene from daredevil which was also set in uh, new york i think uh uh but um that, yeah, so it's it is that thing of like I do think it's funny that um, uh, that yeah that like uh, you know when somebody in a film explains this mad situation you know that like uh, you know oh gremlins these 
they multiply when you're going to wet, or, you know, something they'll say about, oh, this is a car that turns into a robot, and I was like, yeah, of course it does, uh, and, and, uh, and this is a perfect representation of that scene of, like, yeah, I've got these magic shoes, I've killed this guy, and they go into the room, and there's nobody there, and the money's been, like, his shoes have been returned to his shop and everything, I, I, I kind of love that, so it's a cool little element to it. What's interesting about this though as well, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not sure what they're supposed to do, but like, uh, when he said, oh, I'm going to report a murder, and they just say, oh, sit there, I don't know if that's what they would do, uh, or manslaughter, I should say, uh, which, I've always thought manslaughter sounds kind of worse than murder in a way, which, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> obviously with the word slaughter, right? Uh, but yeah, I don't know if that's what they would do in 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 real life. That like, uh, yeah, come report me. Yes, yeah, sit there for a bit. But honestly, they probably would. <laughs> come think about it. <laughs> I mean, like I say, it's just such a, a, just so so funny. Like you know, again, I think this is where that comedy, uh, where sometimes, it, you know, uh, kind of works on multiple levels. Because on the one hand, it might not be funny as you're watching it, and then again, it's kind of as you're watching it, you're thinking, oh, this is. But then again, it might be one of those things where if you describe it to somebody, it might not be funny, but it might. But then when they watch it, it might. Be, but it's, uh, again, it's this multi-layered thing where. And I think I've said this on a few commentaries, but I kind of love how um, how comedy though is like what is funny and, and what isn't funny is not even subjective because obviously I mean you know some people love slapstick comedy, some people love you know like say you know Zucker Abrams Zucker type comedy, or some people love Adam Sandler comedy, or some people love Richard Pryor or Bill Hicks or you know Stuart Lee or you know or, or you know, there's a million different variants in you know you know some people like old school British comedy you know like Bernard Manning or Chubby Brown or whatever, and so there's all these different kinds of comedy, but and like when there is that thing of um, uh, you know you had to be there or you know it's like I think my 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 um, appreciation of comedy is pretty broad, and I I'll laugh at some jokes that barely make sense. I'll laugh at jokes that have got swearing in. I'll laugh at some jokes that you know these like you know a knock knock joke or something and and that. But then just sometimes you'll try to explain to somebody why something's funny, or sometimes you'll be dying laughing, and you're like, why am I finding this so funny? And it's just, it's just such a interesting thing that I think even now do does anybody know why why people really find stuff funny or or what sort of I never noticed that picture on the wall before that's got like a I almost was hoping to be Adam Sandler or something but that's something as well though about um, about um, uh, this kind of it was a bit like how cobblers can't believe like cobblers are still going but there is something about like an independent business, though. There, I know occasionally you will go like, you know, I should say with any any business really, whether it's a multinational conglomerate or whether it's just John round the corner or something. But I do think there is something about like an independent business, though, because uh, there's a model shop that's uh, you know close to where I live, and you know it it was you know quote unquote open for about forty years, and it's it closed down recently. Uh, I say the last couple of years it was open, but you know it, it never seemed like it was. Uh, but like there is something about when you see like independent businesses or independent businesses that you come to really trust, and uh, there is something special, you know, almost again, almost like a magical thing to me. You think like uh, you know, there's like a like a green grocery sort of general store in the village where I grew up. And like when I go see my dad once a week, uh, once or twice a week, that um, you know I walk past that shop and the same people are still there. You know, for the most part, you know, it's the, you know you walk past, it's like wow, it's got the same stuff in it. You're like, and that like say that shop was there since when I was a kid, and you're like, wow, it's still there even now. You know, it's just like you know, you know, twenty, thirty years later, when that shop was there, I think before I was even born, but even so. But even that's like a sort of an interesting thing there. Um, obviously, come, obviously that is his father, and obviously you know you, you need to have seen the film to know that. But again, I just never saw that coming, and I think the few comments because I say I literally only saw the film last night, but the the few little comments and reviews I've read, 
I, I think, you know, um, but that's another thing as well, though, about, say, just over the years being aware of films that get slagged off, that some that I've noticed time and time and time again, where when there's a film that gets slagged off, it's never, it seems never for the reasons that it should be. Like this film, I'm pretty sure most people would say this film is really good. You know, it might not be the greatest film ever made, might not be the most ever fine, might not be the most original film ever made, and then again, it might not be the worst, it's not the, definitely not the worst film ever made, it's not rubbish or anything. But when you get a film that's got this, when people have got the knives out for a certain film, where it's like the Lone Ranger recently, uh, you know, the uh, Army Army, Johnny Depp one, or like say, whether it's like Clerks 2 or Transformers the movie, it just seems to me that they never get slagged off or, or Psycho 98 is the, the, the extreme perfect example, but they never get slagged off for what the film is or the content or where the film's made or where the film's put together. But I've read a couple of reviews and from quite, you know, respectable, again, in air quotes, uh, sources, and they're like, oh, it's the worst film it's ever made, it's a piece of shit, the acting's terrible, the director acting's really bad, the writing's really bad, and it always just seems like the people who want to slag off a film like this, or films that, like, say, it seems like every year since I since I become really aware of movies, you know, since, like, the mid to late 80s when I was getting really, really into film and buying film magazines and watching film programs and getting the cinema a lot more because I had, you know, a little tiny bit more money, you know, than obviously when you're, you know, 10 years old when you're, you know, in your teens or adults, you know, you, you get a bit more money. And, uh, you know, but since I've become just aware of movies more it seems like every year there's a film that comes out and it whether it's wild wild west or superman returns or like you say there's just so many or one a year basically you know but there's the one or two films a year that it just seems to me that just people love slagging off and that's and and it's just like i say this will probably this year's film that everybody slates and it just seems i don't know i don't know what Unless people have got a vested interest in, you know, they've got another film coming out the same day, or you know, they were fired from that company or something. And, uh, as, uh, again, I can imagine this being more of like a sort of more traditionally sort of, you know, being in an Adam Sandler film that's got that like kind of wackiness to it. But again, it it really works within the the context of this movie. There's something really cool about it. But yeah, and I don't know what what because if you're a movie reviewer, at the end of the day, your your business is reviewing movies and you know going to the cinema to watch movies and getting dvd screeners of movies or do you still do dvd screeners of movies but um uh, so yeah if you slag off a movie so much that nobody goes watch it and, and you keep doing that at the end of the day what i don't see what what sort of um what benefit you get out of that is don't see yeah if you genuinely like I said a million times if if you genuinely don't like a film or you know for whatever reason if you think a film's poor or your films are filmed been not very well put together yeah sure of course like it off but when it's just like this is the worst film ever made it's cramming at cinema the people you know be shot and you know it's like it, I've just never bought into that because you know, you know I mean. You know, you can tell when a film's really terrible. Like, say, just sometimes you'll be just watching, like, say, some bizarre satellite channel at three in the morning, and you're like, oh, wow. And it's a film you've never heard of. It's been, you know, the, the acting's terrible, the editing's really bad, the music's all over the place, and you're like, oh, jeez. And then people will watch something like this where, I mean, it's got, you know, freaking Dustin Hoffman and it's Steve Buscemi, you know, like, uh, you know, all these amazingly, John Dabney did the music, you got all this really talented people, and then people go, it's the worst film I've ever seen, or it's like, you know, worthless, and you're like, well, really? And it's it's really nice, though, that, like, you know, and then there was a bit of a wilderness period with the internet where, and, and it's still there to a little bit, but where films would, would get slagged off, you know, just like, you know, mercilessly they would just be like you, nobody would you, you know when when somebody had the teeth into one of these films and you could go on IMDb and you'd have to really really search and search and search for find somebody who's got a level head but I feel like now because commenting on like like YouTube channels has got a bit less and I think not as many people comment on IMDb as they used to and message boards dying on their arse because I don't know I'll let anybody post on message boards anymore uh, that I feel like the few people that do comment it you know, I think you'll always get your knobheads, your trolls, and all that kind of stuff. 
but I think the people that do sort of comment or write reviews, especially people who've got their own websites, they're a little bit more forgiving. I think it's become, again, it's become a cliche of a cliche of itself. That, and again, I guess it's just you know, it makes people evolve and it makes people think a certain way. But I think you know, there's certain people on the internet that are perfect at slagging stuff off, and you know, you can't beat sometimes a really funny review that just slags something off. But I think it's been again, like I say, a bit of a a roll the eyes moment when you see somebody really ripping into a film of like oh it's the worst thing ever and everything and when you see like I say just some of the few comments I've read on IMDb sticking up for this film and they're like yeah I don't see what the, f- what the fuss is but it's good and and you know it, like even a comment as simple as that again just that shot there I say sure anybody from my generation will look at that and go I thought it's been something quite slightly covered in snow uh, maybe they are uh, but yeah I'm sure anybody from my generation will look at that and go Patches not included instantly. I, I, I'll, I'll bet money on that. That shot there reminded me of Arthur 2. I was going to say it'd be great if it's the same, if the same apartment block, but maybe, maybe it is. Who's to, who's to say, right? Again, that's another thing that I kind of like about Adam Sandler, um, just generally, and just, again, decent films where that like there, oh, this has got loads of, excuse me, really old, really old, but you know, people in the 50s, 60s, 70s that like, again, I think that's a sign of a brave filmmaker where I think that uh, a lot of films now where, um, you know, I think, you know, like, you know, the Fog remake got slagged off for this, but when you watch the original Fog and it's got people like Tom Atkins and Jamie Lee Curtis, and then you watch like the Fog remake, and even though I like the Fog remake, it's, you know, it's got all these like young, you know, Tom Wellings, all these real cool young stars in there, and I think it can be the sign of, again, just these little small uh, incremental little things that on the surface, a lot of people never notice, like say, just somebody lighting up a cigarette or just somebody putting a VHS video into a machine or something. Oh, like there, Adam Sandler's like you know, you know. I know it's fashionable at the moment to have a beard, but like there, he's like you know, not clean shaven and stuff, and he's like not wearing fashionable clothes and things. And again, you know, like again, you know, sort of, uh, and even the fact that they've got a rapper in there, and you know, I don't mean there's no disrespect to like Method Man, but it's not like always oh, flavor of the month's rapper or something. You know, it's not like uh, you know, he's some really cool like rap star. You know, not like you know, you're not like. Who, who are the cool rap stars at the moment? You know, it's not like who, whoever's the cool guy at the moment. It's not like they just wheeled him in there, you know. So again, I think it's kind of like really sort of cool filmmaking that like it feels more natural. It's like that last uh, James Gandolfini film, the one with Tom Hardy and the drop. It's instantly just watching that film felt like yeah, that's it felt real. It felt like something that you know. It felt just like you know a real film and. Like I said to you know, mate the other day, uh, that I haven't been in the cinema this year. Uh, uh, you know, that like, you know, and like, I know we're only, you know, three, four months into this this year, like, you know, just getting, you know, just touching, like, you know, the fourth month and stuff. That like, um, that like, you know, for me to have not been in the cinema, like, it do feel like the a lot of generic filmmaking, a lot of like, sort of films that were like, eh. And I think that's really interesting that, like, say, and that's coming from something like me that, or watch anything, uh, you know, and, and again, like, say, you know, take, you know, things you read on the internet, the grain of salt, but again, I you know, read on Reddit, again, I was talking about, like, oh, it's very easy to get addicted to Reddit, but I read um, something on Reddit where it said um, uh, there's been a 20% drop or 15, 20% drop of, like, young people getting the cinema, like, last year. And it is one of these things, though, where with a lot of modern filmmaking, even though I like modern films, that it's like I think it is something to bear in mind that when you do go to the cinema nowadays, again in air, air quotes, it's like what are you actually getting the cinema to see? I mean, like when I go to my local cinema, for the most part, the box office isn't open, so you have to go to like the concessions counter to get like a ticket. Seems a little bit lame. Uh, you know, you really have to scour looking for the film time. They're either on some monitor somewhere or a printout on the wall. Uh, then my cinema might be just, you know, my local cinemas. You know, there's, there's a new one being built, you know, thankfully. Uh, but I've got two local cinemas that I'm really fond of. They None of them have their posters up. So that's like, you know, sort of... Um, 
you know, very rarely have the poster up for the film. You go and see. So again, you know, you can't look at the poster before you go in. Uh, when you go in there, uh, one of my local, my main local cinema, is allocated seating. So you have to kind of decide where you're going to sit before you go in, and that can be a pain if you know because you just go, oh, I'll sit in the middle, and then you're sitting right next to somebody. You, you know, you don't know when there's a cinema full of empty seats, and so that's a little bit lame. And then before the film starts. Loads and loads of times there, there'll be some sponsorship thing, or to say, uh, why don't you get a uh, you know, why don't you get a gift voucher and they'll show you clips from loads of films. Sometimes they'll show you spoilers for the film you're gonna go watch. So even if you try to stay spoiler free, you are kind of like, oh, that's a bit of a shame that you know I've just seen spoilers for a film and I'm gonna go watch. And then because they've stopped doing 35 mil prints, uh, and again I don't go wrong, some digital prints are brilliant perfect you know thing doesn't really necessarily wrong with them but again it's just a little lesser elements uh, you know the, the curtains don't open and close when you go to the cinema anymore they don't have ushers they don't have you know or usherettes you know it's, it's this kind of thing if you know when the credits come on you know i know i'm one of the few people in the world like watching the credits but people come in and disturb you when you're watching the credits you know so you feel like you've got to leave uh you know it's just this thing of what are you paying to go watch? You know, like say, uh, you know, my local cinema, the toilets you know, and work since the day that, or barely work since the day the cinema is open. So it's just this thing. I think it's you know, you know, I've just said that I still love the cinema <laughs> as, you, as you do, but like you know, it's one of these things where I think it's really important to sort of uh, you know for cinemas to keep that in mind that yeah, all these things probably think oh we can save a bit of money if we do this or it's easier if we do that and. You know, like I say, I mean, you know, when I was growing up, like, you know, the, the cinemas that I went to, yeah, looking back on it, you know, like, you know, the the uh, film I did about, the, the little short film I did about the Savoy, yeah, it was what it was, you know, you know, looking back on it, it was probably, did you ever find, uh, it probably was like a shit or whatever, but like, you know, at least they had the decency to put the poster up, you know what I mean, <laughs> you know, at, at least they didn't, you know, turf you out, you know, try, you know, make you feel guilty when you're watching the credits, you know, it might be a little small, Again, small incremental things that, on the surface, you never notice. But looking back on it, it's like, oh, well, you know, oh, she's a badass. Uh, but this is, like, um, again, like one of these films where, one of these um, things in film where you could say it's a, a huge cliche. It's been done a million times. But, again, I kind of love films that are fantastical where, you know, you know, in theory, you could never do this in real life because it's impossible. But I love that. This is really interesting because he's meant to be going to Chicago. And when he walks through that, I know all these bus terminals, train trains, things, are all exactly the same. But it just instantly reminded me of Red Heat. I was like, oh my god, that just looks like Red Heat, <laughs> which is set in Chicago. So, uh, but again, you know, probably just reading something that, yeah, but anything that's fantastical that, you know, theoretically can't happen in real life, I kind of love the fact that, like, you know, it's like there where it's like, um, uh, you know, sort of, um, you know, it's like, oh, you hear when he, she knows for a fact that he's with somebody else, like, so I, I kind of like that. But what's really interesting, though, as well, is that, like, uh, again, I'm, like, such a moron for, like, you know, you know, sort of thinking, well, if that guy does this, who's going to do that? But he's basically said that his daughter lives in Chicago, and even if she goes to jail, that couldn't she sort of... Yeah, find somebody, find out where he is, or find out where his daughter is, and it's, it's like again, it's like um, I know it's it's a comedy sort of film, and it's like you know probably not meant to be taken hundred percent seriously, but it's like oh, the one I think he dropped himself in it by saying where he was going and stuff, but that's yeah, again yeah, you've got to have some you've got to have some sort of element of jeopardy in there, else like be like oh, you know. <laughs> Boom. Again, though, I kind of like that. Again, though, that like, um, you know, not to say, oh, it was Baron Mardi, because like I say, if you literally cherry pick from TV, internet, YouTube, music, there's never been so much choice, you know, never been so much great stuff out there. It's cool. But like local news, like um, when I was growing up, it still exists, but there's um, a local TV channel called Central TV. And they used to be, they used to make their own programs. They used to, you know, they used to have their own news guys who you were dead familiar with. And now I barely know if Central 
TV central news is still going and if like I you're very recently we've got local radio stations that I never listen to because they're so generic and so bland and it's just always one of them things where it's that's funny city final we should have a city we should have a final city final newspaper too uh, but yeah it's like one of these things where again like I say you know don't read you know like oh in my day everything better kind of thing but that said like you know is interesting there like he used his local news to sort of you know catch that woman kind of thing. And it's like when I think, wow, there's a. I've got local TV that I barely know whether it even exists or not anymore. So it's kind of you know, again, again, this extra believability that sort of, or you know, is an extra thing that you can that you can go with, you know, in this film. Do they call them affiliates in America? I believe. Oh, Badass Cobbler. I'm sure Badass Cobbler would be a good name for um, something. Ah, wait, you magic. See what she said there. What's really funny, though, because I'm like really old fashioned tells as well. What's really funny because uh, I've got some really vague, almost, I feel like I've imagined in memories. I'm sure I haven't, though, but there was. Um, one little, little independent shop that was just on the outskirts of town, and um, I remember it used to be two or three streets away from the house that I was uh, where I grew up as a kid, and I remember they had an old till the one the one way it called like no sale and all that kind of stuff, and um, I, I was been thinking wow I could, like that's another thing that where I always think like oh yeah I'm young and hip and all this kind of stuff and younger than the current Batman uh, uh, by two years by the way Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, but I can remember those old fashioned tells like that. It's like, oh, jeez, wow. It's windy out. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic. Uh, don't lose the ticket. What's really funny though, as well, because a few people are saying this on. Um, IMDb and a few different kind of music directors from under 30 and kind of 30. But a few people um, were saying it's almost, like, it's almost like a superhero movie, and uh, that, like, and I guess it kind of is really, it's like, it's like the Equalizer or Early Edition. What I thought, what I thought was quite funny about this scene here, because this really sort of surprised me, that, um, that I thought, oh, this is really gearing up to, and I guess it is close to the end of the film. But I thought, oh, this is like, you know, he's going to drop the watch off and every live happily ever after. And then when this period, I honestly thought, oh, he's going to get killed. I, I really did think that, like, you know, this is probably why this film's, you know, allegedly not made much money. That, like, so it's one of those things, though, where it's kind of thing of, like, um, you know, sort of, again, it, you know, just that little extra nice moment. It's like, no, let him go. Okay, hold on. Just let me take my seat. I don't want to worry about your shoes. You're not going to be in there. When I let you go, you're going to know where this place is. You look like crap out of the place. Let's go. Let's go like that. Too. You've been rolling around the barbecue. Oh, you can stay like that. Face to wasp. Where's my shot? But what's kind of great about this scene, though, as well, is because, like, you kind of think, oh, yeah, it's convenient that he was there, and I guess it kind of was, but at the same time, it's like, um, uh, the fact that, because he's da- it, that's his dad and stuff, that kind of, like, it, it, again, it's that thing where, again, it makes everything, when you watch it as, um, when you watch it again, or you think about it more in your mind, that it kind of shifts everything a little bit, and sometimes it might not work, you might have to, like, you know, hit it with an hammer to get it in, maybe a little bit, or, you know, it's kind of, you're like, well, but then again, it's kind of, it, it's got that ex believability to it, it's got that nice little, not believability, that's wrong, but it's got that, um, it's got that extra dimension to it, and again, I'm a sucker for stuff like that. Excuse me.
I mean, like I say, um, I've got to admit, like I say, I just never saw this ending coming at all. It just completely, you know, but like I thought that car got blindsided. It just completely, I just, no, just not expect, you know, because some things you think, oh, you know, they put little clues in there or, you know, people are like, oh, you know. And I, I know, like, the Steve Buscemi character was stuff like, oh, if you need any money or he was, like, really looking out for him, but... I I didn't think you know sometimes when that when that kind of stuff is worked into a film it's usually people are basically winking at the camera or nudge nudge and all that kind of stuff. I never I just thought he was just like his mate and the guy who worked next door to with the shop. I mean, I, like I think they they covered that quite well because I never saw him coming. Just you know, I just I mean I guess there's one little element there where when he put his dad's shoes on his dad was still alive it wasn't like he was dead or anything so I guess you could say, conceivably say that character was um, still knocking around or whatever so there's, there was a possibility there and again I thought he he, um, he hadn't been in it very long you know does nothing's cameo but then again I thought that's just where it was there was like a little cameo uh, actually I'll just say this uh, while I'm thinking about it but if uh, anybody's going to get the Scorpion King 4 the quest for power uh, uh, it's a very very good movie and it's a hell of a lot of fun uh, but if you're getting it for Luther Igno's uh, part uh, and that's the only reason you're getting it like I say it's a brilliant film I think you'll enjoy it but uh, Luther Igno is only in that film for about uh, two minutes or so, <laughs> so I just thought to uh, give a little bit of a forewarning. I don't know how many people are going to be watching uh, The Scorpion King 4 Quest for Power and The Cobbler but uh, you never know right But this is a thing as well, and again, I'm a little bit of an idiot, and I'm probably sure so stop soon. So I feel like I'm going to sneeze like a couple of minutes. Uh, no. Isn't that weird when you think you can sneeze? Anyway, yeah, but those shoes there, unless I've just missed something, won't every single pair of those shoes, if you try them on, be a dead person? Uh, again. Could be reading too much into it. Could be seeing someone that's not there. Uh, so um, I'm sure. I, I'm sure I've probably uh, missed something there because, unless well, I guess it would be kind of intensive to throw the shoes away. Maybe because it's the the magic shoes. I, I don't know how it works. I've got model up. <laughs> I read a fact as well, just had a sip of my cold coffee, which is now finished. Uh, cold coffee's got no taste. I think they might be right. But what's funny though as well, I don't know if it is just completely uh, me imagination. The, oh, this was a nice little tie-in that when, um, right at the start when Adam Sandler said uh, he knew that guy was successful because he's got his own driver. And then, boom! It's like, nice book bookmark, uh, bookend, should say, to the movie. But what's really funny, though, as well, this is something, and again, you know, probably, you know, sucker for coincidence, probably reading too much into it, but one thing I've noticed, though, films that um, get slagged off a lot, or films that, like I say, have got a reputation for being a little bit, you know, I got a bit rambling, but films that have got that reputation for being this thing, <laughs> you know, this kind of thing, where they always end like there's going to be a sequel or they've, they've, they end on this like interesting upbeat notes like almost like Jack Reacher or uh, Master Universe or Daredevil or there's a million of these films where they, you just think oh I'd love to be another one and there probably never will be I mean you never know this could be they could make another like you know I almost kind of wish they don't away because it, it kind of just it's so nice so it just ends up in the air, like kind of thing. Look at that, it's like um, Green Hornet. Uh, but yeah, that like, uh, yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's got that proper vibe to it, you know. It's a good shot. Reminds me of, I think I've said this before in loads of commentaries, but loads of the old Warner Brothers films ended with um, a helicopter shot, usually zooming away, but it was just kind of, that kind of shot. There's like a, again, not a, not a, not a, a, a cliche, as it but an ending of like a big aerial shot like that. Like, like say, what a beautiful shot. And there you go. 
the cobbler. Like I say, I mean, we always one of these things where I know it's been talking about it for the last you know, ninety odd minutes, whatever it is. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's it's such an interesting thing to see how this film if it'll get accepted and or just to see you know how it does. Not I say it's not the be all and end all because like I say, I mean, I could care less. Uh, obviously, I, I don't want the filmmakers to suffer, and you know, I like the that I like the fact that the film if the film does well filmmakers can work again and you know you get more credibility in the industry and stuff but just on a personal level Sandra you, uh, you never see that name movie Sandra Locke Sandra James uh, but um, yeah the, you know it would be interesting just to see how this film does to see if it just makes it gives itself a bit of a cult following or um, you know just to see if it sort of you know just completely uh, disappears or whatever well I guess time with the, the judge right I know uh, on nearly every commentary I do, I always um, try to pick somebody random, and I'd, I didn't do it before, and so I guess um, I guess in the next five seconds, the first uh, name that comes on, it could be the random person. Five, four, three, two, one, and Chris and Pappas is my um, random crew person. Uh, so, Chris and Pappas. Uh, be interesting to see what that person has done. I will uh, put it on the uh, Sectex uh, website afterwards. I say it was interesting as well because uh, I'm sure the, there was some sort of, like, say, um, it said about product placements a, a bit later on and stuff like that. Um, special makeup. When I go see this when it comes out in um, uh, May in the UK, I'll, uh, I'll have to just make a... I mean, I always do anyway, but I'll have to make a note of... Uh, or nearly always do. I'll have to make a note of uh, watching the credits to see if I do get uh, shifted away. Uh, owner, S. Adler, Sandler. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Ryan O'Neill, isn't he the guy from Love Story? <laughs> He's now uh, a construction group, not the nothing wrong with that. I've literally just realised that uh, I haven't had the power plugged in on the uh, <laughs> the power of the road before this uh, commentary finishes. That's quite funny. It's like, oh. Do something every day that scares you, right? Oh, the battery's running low, no, oh, it's just come up. You might want to plug in your PC. <laughs> That's funny. That'd be interesting if that sound come up over the uh, over the uh, recording. I heard it through uh, my headset. Through my headset. If that message comes on again, I'll mess up. We're on the song credit, so we can't be too far away. But it's like those songs. It's interesting because I've, I almost felt like you know there was no songs in this front of where phrase. Uh, Musical phrase. Aerial footage provided by Legal Services. Sandler Des Rogers. I'd be ace if that was an Adam Sandler legal firm. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> Producers wish to thank. New York bus terminal. What's the same? Oh, that can't be the same New York bus terminal from uh, to Death Wish Three. There, shoe service Institute of America and the pickle guys. I want to find out. I want some of the pickle guys pickles. New York film. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, and help this film out if you see it. Bit of karma. And uh, I'm looking forward to Pixels though, so it'll be good to do a, go see that in cinema and go see that when it comes out. But uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, see you on the other side. <laughs> and.